probably find out more now about that from our correspondent Jane Stanley. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? As you can see behind me, the uh, Trade Center appears to be still burning. We see these huge clouds of smoke and ash, and we know that behind that there's an empty piece of what was a very familiar New York skyline, a symbol of the financial prosperity of this city, but uh, completely disappeared now. I want to tell you that we are getting word from New York right now that another building has collapsed. I understand that this is a 47-story building. Building. Uh, if I don't, do we have pictures of it? I guess that's smoke now. Correct me if I'm wrong uh, in the control room, please. But is that smoke coming from this third collapse? Okay, that that is what we're understanding, which makes sense because it looks like the sun is is going down. But uh, the heavy black smoke once again. Jane, I think many of us, when we heard the news, perhaps on the radio earlier today, were uh, completely flabbergasted by it and and just couldn't un comprehend it. I mean, it, was, it almost sounded too far-fetched. Um, I was wondering what it felt like for you being in Manhattan. Well, unfortunately, I think we've lost the line with uh, Jane Stanley in Manhattan. Perhaps we can rejoin her and follow that up later. They create a situation where if you tell the truth, you, you're considered uh, a lunatic, you know? In other words, if, if someone goes on a TV show and says, 9-11 is inside job, oh, you're an idiot, you're crazy. They call you names. You can't be afraid of that. Let us never tolerate outrageous conspiracy theories concerning the attacks of September the 11th. Malicious lies that attempt to shift the blame away from the terrorists themselves, away from the guilty. Conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories. Conspiracy theories. On Tuesday the 11th of September 2001, as American Airlines Flight 11 pushed back from the gate at 7.40 a.m., there happened to be a routine defense training exercise taking place at the U.S. Air Defense Command. So when the first reports for possible hijack came through from civilian air traffic control, 57 minutes later, some of the military thought the reports were part of the exercise. We have a, a problem here. We have a hijacked aircraft headed towards New York. And we need you guys to scramble some S-16s or something up there. What? Is it world or No, it's not an exercise from the But in the confusion, it was a further nine minutes before interceptors were scrambled. To be honest with you, uh, we arrived on uh, late Monday night and went into action on Tuesday morning. And not until today did we get a full opportunity to work uh, uh, the entire site other than the spot at church and day to which we were deployed. But to be honest with you, uh, we arrived on uh, late Monday night and went into action on Tuesday morning. But to be honest with you, uh, we arrived on uh, late Monday night and went into action on Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning, Tuesday morning. In October of 1993, there was a car bombing of the World Trade Center. The bombing was not successful in bringing the building down because the car was parked too far away from the interior columns. The bomber was a 43-year-old Egyptian, Imad Salim. According to stories from the New York Times, Salim was paid $1 million and was trained by the FBI to perform this reprehensible act. Salim figured out that he was being set up to be the patsy and taped John Antisev. 
Antisev, a top American FBI agent, told Salim to proceed with the bombing. Last winter, the FBI was praised for its speed in cracking the case of the World Trade Center bombing and bringing four suspects to trial. Now, there is some evidence that the FBI may have known of the plot in advance through an informant and might, might even have stopped the bombing that killed six people. Correspondent Jacqueline Adams has the story. FBI agents might have been able to prevent last February's deadly explosion at New York's World Trade Center. They discussed secretly substituting harmless powder for the explosives, but they didn't, according to the FBI's own informant, Imad Salem. Unbeknownst to the FBI at the time, Salem recorded many of his conversations with his handlers. I'm holding 903 pages of draft transcripts. William Kunzler represents Sheikh Omar Abdel Rahman and several others charged with conspiring to blow up a series of New York City landmarks four months after the World Trade Center bombing. That case has not yet gone to trial. Kunzler confirmed newspaper reports of the Salem transcripts. In one, Salem complains to an FBI agent, since the bomb went off, I feel terrible, I feel bad, I feel here is people who don't listen. The agent replies, hey, I mean, it wasn't like you didn't try and I didn't try. You can't force people to do the right thing. There is material in here to show gross governmental misconduct. thing that concerns me is that what are we doing for the thousands of men and women actually who are in London working and I say that because at half past nine this morning we were actually running an exercise for over a company of a thousand people in London based on simultaneous bombs going off precisely at the railway stations that happened this morning so I still have the hairs on the back of my legs standing upright. To you get this quite straight you were running uh, a, an exercise to see where, how you would cope with this and it happened while you were running the exercise? Precisely and it was uh, about half past nine this morning we planned this for a company and for obvious reasons I don't want to reveal their name, but they're listening and they'll know it. And we had a room full of crisis managers for the first time they met. And so within five minutes, we made a pretty rapid decision. This is the real one. Uh, and so we went through the correct, the correct drills of activating crisis management procedures to jump from slow time to quick time thinking. Uh, today, we were running an exercise for a company. Bearing in mind, I'm now in the private sector. And we sat everybody down in the city, a thousand people involved in the whole organization, but the crisis team and the most peculiar thing was, we based our scenario on the simultaneous attacks on the underground and mainline station. So we had to suddenly switch an exercise from fictional to real. And one of the first things is, get that bureau number, when you have a list of people missing, tell them. And so it took a long to, time. Just to get this right, you were actually working today on an exercise that envisioned yes. virtually this scenario. If London can survive the Blitz, it can survive four miserable bombers like this. Not saying there are four bombers, not saying there are four bombers, not saying there are four bombers, four miserable events like this. To understand the London bombers and who perpetrated them, you first need to look at 3-11-2004, the bombings in Madrid, Spain. Years after the blast that rocked trains in the city of Madrid, Spain, the government admits that Al-Qaeda had no connection with the attacks. Every one of the supposed bombers had intimate links to the Spanish security services, including the head of their bomb squad. The alleged leader of the bombers, who reportedly gave dynamite to the terrorists, was connected to the Madrid bomb squad. And we see the exact same earmarks, the same M.O. in the London bombings that we witnessed in Madrid. Tony Blair in, in England, he, he was ready to, to go out. The people didn't want him. The lies that he told about the weapons of mass destruction. The public were ready to have a mass demonstration and maybe even riots in the streets over the new ID card that they've been told they're going to get. And lo and behold, right on cue, the so-called mysterious um, uh, bombers bombed uh, London, you know, which put Tony Blair back up there on the, the grandstand. Oh, I'm here to protect you. We're doing all we can. It's these nasty Muslims that did this. And uh, it happened right on cue. You couldn't get better terrorists as friends for Tony Blair than they've got right now.